to welcome in our co-host, the Admiral Mills Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. And we have the star as well. And Maria Lawrence, an all-star. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Missed y'all last week. Um, yeah, where were you? Um, actually, we had a Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs uh, meeting out at the airport. Um, took a little tour. I'm chair of the Government Affairs um, of course committee you, of, course of, you are. <laughs> of the chamber and um, so we had a um, really cool tour by uh, airport authority airport manager Nick Deal and um, did that so that's where I was very nice you know she missed a week so she comes in this week with two or three pages of single type notes that she's going to be we're yeah. going to be entertained by maria not night. at all not yeah. at all i'm always. going to facilitate That's always it. entertained by maria by That's the way it. uh today is the uh the perfect day if you like a good balance of sunrise and sunset it's a 703 sunrise a 703 sunset you get 12 hours on each side wow and we all we all appreciate balance, Rob. In a perfectly divided nation, we have a perfectly <laughs> divided day, Bill. <laughs> That's a good lead in, yeah. yeah. There, there you go. That you need to save that for a, a roundhouse Friday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, that's just two days away, by the way. Um, here's what we're going to do here, Maria. I'm going to let you introduce our guests here today because you kind of set up this first segment for us. Absolutely, absolutely. I am um, pleased to be serving with the current chair of the chamber. That would be mm -hmm. Justin Henry. Uh, with Panhandle Homes, and then I think on, because I heard her giggling, um, I think on the phone we have our CEO, Beth Webster. So um, I'm here. <laughs> okay, great. So um, we've got lots of things going on at the chamber. Um, as we talked before we came on the air, Justin is the current chair. I will be the chair next year. Of course so, you will be. <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, and it's one of those situations where you sort of move through the chairs you start out as treasurer then um yeah, like, basically like the, incoming uh, chair that's a columbus and, does that yeah, yeah there you go there you go so um and if you're lucky you end up being there for 14 years or yeah something. <laughs> no, that's exactly right that's exactly right yeah justin's been around um for a while and we've seen um quite a few changes you know of course with the um, with the departure of our longtime um, executive, Tina Combs, um, who became a teacher right. at Musselman High School. Um, Beth came on board in um, difficult, at the, to say the least, circumstances during COVID. Um, unique situation, very Yeah, very it unique. really was. So, um, but we're, we're plugging along and doing all kinds of events and um, and Justin has been at the helm and has done a, a really great job this year. So. Justin, welcome thank in. Thank Good you. to see you. Thanks for having me. Beth, thank you for joining us by phone. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And good morning, Maria, Justin, and Rob. Well, not Bill. She didn't say Bill, though. <laughs> yeah, Just remember that, Bill. Uh, Bill. It's Beth, okay. That's all right. Beth, I'm liking you more and more as this interview goes along. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, Bill. Yeah, it's okay. No, no, Beth. no. Don't start down that <laughs> oh, road, yeah, Beth. Yeah, no, no, go, no, you're good go, the first go time. Right ahead, He's Beth. fine. He's fine. <laughs> uh, Beth, tell me about taking over during a pandemic. What was that like? Well, it, it wasn't the best time to start because at that time we were still doing all of our meetings and, and events and things like that on Zoom. So being new to Berkeley County, I was very excited to get out and meet people. And it was probably three to four months into the position before we started having in-person mixers and women's networking events and other things. But um, it's it's been a great transition, and I'm happy to see everyone out and about. Our events are having you know record-breaking crowds now, so it's it's all good. <laughs> Justin, tell me about your experience throughout that, and uh, and the four, was fourteen years. Did is that what? No, I was I was exaggerating. Mm -hmm. um, our past uh, chair, David Langford, mm -hmm. uh, he has I think he's been nine years serving on the board, going through. Um, I think I've been, I started in two thousand and eighteen uh, on the board of directors, and then I moved into the executive committee as the treasurer uh, in two thousand nineteen. So, you know, it's been it's been a really great process for me. I've really love berkeley county i love all of the business community in berkeley county and the chamber is at the heart of that the chamber is such a great organization to help facilitate not only we, we a lot of times when you think about a chamber of commerce you think about some of the larger industries the larger businesses of course we have procter and gamble and we have macy's cmc is coming into town 
but really the majority of our membership is small business mm-hmm. and facilitating opportunities for these small businesses to network with each other, uh, providing professional development opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have uh, otherwise, um, providing opportunities for them to grow their businesses and then really just be a, a resource for things that they need. I've seen such a, a, a benefit from that for so many years in my personal career that whenever the opportunity came and I was asked if I would be willing to serve on the board, it was a, a no brainer. I really wanted mm-hmm. to give more to that chamber. That's I feel is gives so much to our business community and we're such a, a thriving community uh, with such diverse needs uh, that it's, it's a unique organization to be a part of, but it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Do most companies that move into Berkeley County join the chamber? The vast yeah. majority do. It is a, uh, you know, one of those things that we always like to say with the chamber of commerce, you know, it's kind of that seal of approval. You know, you're, you are a part of a, a larger business organization. It, it really, um, gives you validity. And, you know, I think that's a really important group to be a part of. You also get to, to mingle and uh, spend time with very successful and very like-minded business people. Um, so I've always been of the opinion that, you know, if you want to be better, surround yourself with people that are better than you. And that's the way I felt the chamber has been for me for that's a lot of years. The way I have Bill and Maria in studio <laughs> with me on Wednesdays. That's great. So they, you yeah. can improve them. No, I was looking at it the other way around. But okay, I'll go with that. Sure. Yeah, yeah we're just uh, we're just kind of hacks. Uh, Rob, uh, Rob is the pro, which we well know when he is not here. Sorry, Mike Hornby, you're a pro too. Um, but uh, I've made this statement many times. Don't try to host a talk show on your own. I'm a paid professional. Yeah, Don't try to, it's not as easy as it looks. Don't yeah, try you, this at home. You need you need people around uh, you. Beth, does uh, if you want to join the chambers, it's just simply a matter of paying your dues when they're due, or are there other things that you have to do before the chamber gives you the stamp of approval? There's other things you have to do. You fill out an application and submit it through the chamber website, and then I show it to the executive board or executive committee, which meets once a month, and then if they get approval there, then on our full board meetings, which are every two months, they're approved, and of course then there is a a fee involved depending on the number of employees you have. So is it a matter of making sure the... uh application looks good or is there some kind of vetting process what what would make you turn down an application a business that's not credible or something that the chamber wouldn't want to represent that would be a good thing to turn down yeah. i think <laughs> that's right that's right we oh. also pay attention to make sure that it's not some sort of a, an outside uh company that is not Technically, a company, they may mask themselves that way to be able to get your list of chamber members, th- things to make sure that they are credible and they are accurate. Does this happen very often? No. It, no, it does no. not. No, but it is something that we look at and you know, and make sure that uh, if, if a name sounds unusual or doesn't seem like it's local or maybe their business address is not local, like we do a, a good, little more checking to like make sure. Like a good Italian name. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Or um, <laughs> if it has a an address that's like Arlington, Texas, we're like, wait a minute, what what's happening here? But again, in my tenure, and I've I've I'm a recidivist. I've been on the chamber or board on and off three or four times. This is my first tour through the executive committee, um, but. I, I can't remember that really being done. Now, somebody did ask on our chat, Bill, as you like to say, how many volunteer positions, how many paid positions? Um, you guys want to uh, chat about that for a little bit? Beth, would you like to take that or would you like well, me to? Sure. Um, well, we have um, three employees in the office. We have myself and then we have a director of marketing and events, Natalie Klein, and an administrative assistant, uh, Annette O'Connor. So we have three paid positions, and other than that, we rely on volunteers. Um, and we always welcome volunteers to help and to come out and just even just support by coming and attending events. And one such event as you're having this weekend, is it, the tailgating of Under the Stars? Yes, this is one of our biggest events we have each year. And one of the most fun. (laughs) Absolutely. It's going to be this Friday, September 27th at 6 o'clock, and tickets are still for sale for $65. And we're going to have food, drinks, raffles. Uh, Rick Rohn will be the DJ, food by Mountaineer Pub, photo booth, and we have over 80 auction items, including four getaways. 
Now, the money that you raise from this, and I remember it's a, a fairly substantial amount. How do you use the money, Beth? Well, that just that goes to – this is actually a fundraiser. Some things we do, like the teacher's breakfast, are more mm. to support the teachers and just break even so that we can welcome the 141 new teachers in. This is a fundraiser that would go towards – Things that um, any nonprofit has, such as rent and salaries, taxes, it just you know helps us to balance the budget at the end of the year. Rent. Yeah. Speaking of which, y- yes, take that, Speaking. Justin. So yes, yeah, so we we're excited. We have uh, the Chamber of Commerce has been located in the same location for the past thirty three years. Uh, this year, we've made a, a move. Uh, we've moved to a new location uh, at eighteen hundred West King Street. And you, you, it's easy to identify us because uh, the, the great new Apple Annie's uh, coffee shop and bakery is our, our neighbor. We're in the same building as them. So, you know, after 33 years being in the, the same location, um, even a small office move can be a challenge. Correct, Beth? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so, so we are officially in that new, new location. And, uh, you know, we should be able to, one thing we never were able to do in our previous location was actually have our committee meetings in the office. We didn't have a boardroom. We didn't have a, 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 an office for that. So we now have a, a conference room where we can host our executive committee meetings. Our other committees that we, we do can be actually in the office as opposed to us finding a, an a outside location to go get, you know, you have those uh, meetings. So it's, it's fantastic. It's it's exciting. Uh, signage isn't even up on the building yet, but it should be within the next. Uh, but next just 10 go days. to Apple Annie's yeah. and, and have a us. cookie. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh, the cookies yeah. are amazing. Cookies we'll, we'll be billing them for the advertising. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> they won't know what happened or why they're getting a bill, but exactly, they're getting it. Yeah. exactly. Just the there's occasional confusion between your role in the chamber and the development authority. I know you work fairly close with the development authority, but how do you uh, how do you mutually support each other? So, um, really, the, so the, the development authority itself is, they're helping facilitate the, the growth of new projects coming to Berkeley County. They are going to help with the, the role of finding locations. Um, the, the chamber is a really support, just a supportive role to what the development authority is doing. Um, the chamber is going to help promote what options there are for businesses here, what um, what other businesses have already located in our area, how they can be uh, networked with so they can they can give them some additional information and background on Berkeley County. But the Development Authority is really kind of the lead generator of bringing new business to Berkeley County. And the Chamber of Commerce is really the supportive role after that, that process takes place and really is a promoter of the businesses of Berkeley County that are currently here. And you use the term networking a while ago, and that, that was one of the, I think, real attributes of the chamber, networking among all the businesses, not only the existing businesses, but one that's thinking about coming into the area. Absolutely. And, and every month we, ha- we host uh, chamber mixers uh, that allows you know, all of the members to, to get together, and non-members as well. You don't have to be a member of the chamber to come to a mixer. Uh, we have multiple events throughout the year to help uh, generate more time for those businesses to to work together, and sometimes it's nothing. Nothing happens at those immediate interactions, but it's a contact you have for the future. Someone that you you remember meeting, you have a face to a name, and you you know you know that that's the person you want to go to um, for a certain type of task or, or a certain industry. Um, we, we also have started uh, promoting professional development opportunities. So we actually have a, an opportunity coming up uh, on October the twenty fourth. Uh, it's an intermediate Excel class that will be hosted out at uh, Blue Ridge. So these are some of the things that we talked about that some of the larger businesses have these resources. They have these opportunities for the additional professional development uh, where some of our smaller businesses, you know, the, it, for them to go out and put together an Excel class and they have five employees doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. make sense. But if we can do that as a chamber and provide a, a, a space and an opportunity, we can help to, to provide that service for more of those smaller businesses uh, and just help educate them more and give them more of the tools they need to be successful. You also sponsor Berkeley Leadership, is it? Yes. Yeah, talk about that if you will. Yeah, so um, Leadership Berkeley uh, actually started yesterday. The 2024-2025 two, uh, class started off yesterday. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Jeff Cross. Uh, he's at United Bank, but he's our chair for, uh, for Leadership Berkeley. And he does a fantastic job running this program. But we kicked it off yesterday, I believe, with 26 students. 
Maybe 25. 25. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and I was fortunate enough to be there for orientation for a, a little bit of it yesterday and getting to, to hear about some of these new, uh, the new leadership, uh, students we have this year. And it's, it's hard for me to, to refer to them as students because they're so well accomplished themselves. Um, and, and they're so successful in their own, their own right to begin with. And the, the overwhelming theme that I heard yesterday of, of the question, why did you want to be a part of leadership Berkeley? It was really to know the community and to get to know one another and, and know the area that they, they live and work in. And leadership Berkeley is a great program for that. It will run from now through June of next year. Um, one of the highlight trips is in February. They'll go to Charleston yeah. and meet our legislators and have a, a, a round in Charleston. Now, they're exposed to uh, many facets of the state, uh, the local government, state government, and also the local businesses. Go through some of those examples of who they would have exposure to. So they'll have uh, an educa a education day uh, at one point where they'll get to go through James Rumsey, some of our, our schools through Berkeley County Schools, um, I, I believe Blue Ridge is a part of that. You know, Maria is very involved in it, so she's she's far. Yeah, I'm on that committee too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob. Maria's, of course you are. I didn't say anything. I know. I know. Uh, you'll have your your local um, economic development day, where you'll have you know, economic development panels. You'll go to local businesses. Development authority is a big part of that day. Uh, there's a, a, I believe it's a state economic development that, you know, where we was more involved with the, the state economic development. Uh, there are, of course, the one in Charleston is more of a government affairs style uh, um, day where you're going through more of the, the government roles in our, our um, state and our county. Healthcare day. Healthcare day where you get to go, you know, Maria is so generous and helps with uh, setting up a lot of things with hospice. Mm -hmm. uh, Valley Health is a part of that. Uh, uh, West Virginia University Medicine as well. So there, there's a lot of different things. And that county be commission. They'll, they'll have a county commission yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And I think what's, um, what's cool about this program, and um, I had to do a little arm twisting. Are you listening, John Gilstrap, um, to, uh, to, to sort of say to him, I think this would be a really good program for you as kind of a newcomer. Um, we have people all ages, all walks of life, um, who are from here, who may not be from here. I think Justin was saying yesterday, you asked people to raise their hands and how many, about half the class um, had been here for less than five years or so. Yes. Um, so it's just an incredible opportunity. And wherever I go, in a chamber role, I'll ask people how many of you have taken part in Leadership Berkeley and, you know, a, a really large substantial amount of folks have done it. I think I was in the second class, um, like in 1997, but Kevin Starlipper told me that he was before me, so I may have the year wrong on that, but, um, but yeah, it's just a, a really good program to get to know the community. So. Do you have to be a member okay. of the chamber to do that? No. Beth, yeah, there you go. No, you don't have to be a member of the chamber. There's a slightly higher fee. So um, We had three people that were nominated and decided to participate this year, so it actually was in their best interest to join the chamber and get the lower fee. So they became a chamber member as well as a new Leadership Berkeley participant. Um, but no, you can um, be a non-member and still be participate in the program. What is the relationship between the Berkeley County Chamber of Commerce and the State Chamber of Commerce? We attend um, the annual summit for the State Chamber. We receive notifications and things going on for chambers in all 55 counties um, almost on a weekly basis. And we have a nice relationship with them. They're kind of like our, our parent chamber. And then our, our real parent chamber is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington, D.C., on Pennsylvania Avenue. We've had Steve Roberts, the state director of the Chamber of Commerce, and he's just been a phenomenal guest. Great information. Uh, are, yes, he's are, very, very nice. Very much. Uh, very impressed by the guy. Are you guys, generally speaking, in agreement and lockstep with what the state does? I, I Yes. Uh, yeah, I would say that, but from a political standpoint, one of the things that, with with the exception of school levies, um, that kind of thing, things that we think would really enhance the community, the Martinsburg-Berkeley County Chamber of Commerce doesn't take 
a political view on anything. And sometimes the state chamber and the U.S. chamber, although we are members, it's it's not like an umbrella agency. You mm-hmm. don't have to fall in lockstep. I think I'm right in, That's in correct. saying you that, are. don't you yes. think? We're nonpartisan okay. at the right, local right. level. Oops, you stay away from politics. We try. We try. <laughs> we try to on this show as well. It doesn't always work out, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, talking about U.S. Chamber, uh, last year, year before last, when the Civil Phil Institute gave out this National Civility Awards, the U.S. Chamber was one of the recipients for civility. If you, if you join the chamber and you have an interest in becoming part of the leadership of the chamber, what is that cycle like? How many years does it take to do that? Well, Justin, 14. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, so that process would be, if you want to be on, we have a board of directors. Uh, that nominating uh, process starts every summer, uh, goes out in July. Uh, the, the slate of um, new members is cut off. I believe that nominations are over the end of August, and they're voted upon by the membership in October. Um, at that point, you do have to, to, to be on the executive committee. You do have to be on the board uh, for a year at that point. And board terms are three years. Um, so, um, you know, you have folks in the community for a long time, Teresa McCabe, Ken Barton, folks who, um, Dave DeJarnette, who have been on, spend a three year term, maybe go off for a year, maybe take a little hiatus longer than that, and then can come back on um, and do that. Because there are people who are very interested in um, in continuing the relationships and what happens um, uh, as well. Absolutely. So, um, but go ahead then for the... So if you, if you are uh, asked to be on the executive committee, and typically that is done by the, there's a nominating committee that's put in place by the incoming chair, uh, and they have their slate of who they would like to see it on that executive committee. You can be in your last term on the on the board of directors and brought in to be the the, the treasurer, and you then you then have a five year stint at that point. <laughs> so you, your term just gets extended by five years to go through all of those. Hence chairs. why yep. some of us have been around for longer. So, so than you can others. be there for a little longer. I have um, sixty seconds left. Is there anything else that you want to promote with the chamber event wise that's coming up? Beth, you got anything? Well, I, uh, Justin had um, talked about the professional development we have on October 24th. We have both a morning and afternoon intermediate Excel, but we also have a, a third professional development on October 29th. Um, it's going to be taught by one of our board members, Moy Mendoza of SC Studios, and it's learning in-depth marketing skills for social media, cell phones, and AI. And that will also be taught at Blue Ridge at 11 o'clock. Justin, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Beth, thank you for calling in. Thank you. Is, or is your photo professionally done? It's a marvelous photo. Yeah. <laughs> it's done by Jenny DeCola. We should give. She's and Italian. We got. She sounds like an Italian name. We need she to promote is. that business. She is. Yes. Thank you very much, Beth. All thank right. You. Thank you, Maria. Have thank you day. for setting that up. You're welcome.